When I'm shooting music videos, I often get inspired by the content that I consume. So here is how I stole the Dutch Valley and the Stormzy look for my new music video, 3AM, by Moses, featuring Tactics and Kahooks. It's three in the morning, got a bitch calling and calling. Trying to come over and fuck me the vomit. I swear that these bitches got problems. I swear that these hitters got problems, but don't talk about it in face, it's normal. How the fuck you gon' beat up your girl like you breezy and scream, these hoes ain't loyal. When I was approached by Moses to do this music video, after listening to the track, I had a hundred ideas pop to mind. After looking through all my reference videos, there was one particular look I really wanted to pull off. It was the spotlight effect from the Circle the Ends video and from I Don't Know. So what you're seeing now is that reference. The ray of light, the smoke in the air, the effects, it just oozes coolness. So I really wanted to try capture that in this video for 3am. So if we stop on one of these closer up shots, you can see there's a secondary source of light. It's projecting just enough so that it's falling off nicely into shadow across his face. So I'm keeping this in mind as well as I'm trying to come up with a lighting plan. And with the, I don't know, video featuring Tion Wei and Stormzy and Dutch again, it's a little bit different. You can see there's the trio of them. They've got like this flame machine in the back, but they've got this similar kind of beam of light. And what I really wanted from like that reference was the trio of them. And in this case, that would be Moses Tactics and Kahooks. I wanted to combine the two looks into one cohesive uh, vision. Another small detail, which I really liked about the Stormzy video is this circle of light that you can see around their feet, almost framing them into like a zone. And I wanted to replicate that as well, rather than the kind of boxier shape from Dutch Valley's video. So what did I actually use to achieve this look? Well, I boiled it down to three main things. My Forza 300B to get that nice fall off of light across his face, a smoke machine in the background to just to create a little bit of atmosphere, and my Forza 60C with a projector mount. That way we can get that ray, that beam of light. You know, it's the heavyweight of, of the video. So this particular setup, excluding the camera stuff, just lighting, costs about three and a half thousand dollars. That's Australian, by the way. So if I'm to price that out individually, the Forza 300B with a softbox comes to about seventeen hundred dollars. The smoke machine, you can kind of get those anywhere for about fifty to hundred bucks. And for that beam of light, the Forza 60C, that was about eleven hundred dollars, and the project amount is about five hundred dollars. Keep in mind, this is all Australian pricing. So what was our lighting plan and our location? Well, Moses had this contact that let us use the warehouse after hours to kind of keep budget down, which really helped. That kind of also gave us extra flexibility in the floor space to really place both the equipment and the artists where I needed them. So if I pull up the lighting plan, what does that actually look like? Well, we've got the smoke machine, which I know looks like a tank, but we've got the smoke machine way hidden in the back. That's gonna just be filling out smoke in the room to just give it that atmosphere and, and for the ray of light to come through. Talking about the ray of light, we've got the Forza 60C uh, with that projector mount broomed up on a C stand as high as it could go um, at about 45 degrees from the artist. So it creates like a nice interesting shape when it comes into frame as well. With our Forza 300B, we put that just left to the camera to get that nice roll off on the artist's face. Uh, we had the softbox, 90 centimeter softbox with the grid on there just to control the spill. So that way we're not lighting up just the whole warehouse. We're just getting that artist look. So with the lighting plan in place, what does it actually look like? Well, it looks like this, or at least the raw clip does. When I put my Rec 709 LUT on there, we kind of see a little bit closer to what the, the final image is meant to look like. In this super wide look here, you can see uh, aura management, the boy is just hanging out, waiting for me to finish my setup. We're kind of getting what we're looking for. We got that beam of light coming in. We got that smooth roll off across the face because of the 300B with the grid and like the smoke in the air. That's why we can actually see the light. So I'm pretty happy here because we knew we wanted to film in five by four. I can actually get the lights a little bit closer than I normally would for a 16 by nine frame. Because we're chopping off the sides of the video anyways, we're gonna hide the light and any like little C-stand legs that you might see, we didn't really care that much because the whole video's theme was still pretty raw. And for anything that you can still see after some good placement and color grading, it gets hidden like anyways. So it wasn't something we stressed too much about. So what did the camera work look like? Well, I wanted to maintain the flow and the dynamics 
uh, in this video. I wanted that light to parallax along the background uh, of the artists and, and give them a, a hair light so they would pop uh, while also still maintaining the grunginess. So for about half the shots, the close-up shots, I put my A7S 3 on my DJI RS2 gimbal so that way we could get some smooth moving around the frame so that way it kind of feels intimate like we're still in the room with the artist. For these particular close-up shots I had my Tamron 28-75 to f2.8 lens on the camera that way I was able to get the nice detail shots for the b-roll but also have the flexibility to just zoom whenever I needed uh, without it being too wide that you're kind of seeing the whole room. But for my wide shots, I really wanted to contrast the intimacy with some isolation. So I got up on a ladder about 15 feet in the air, put my 17 to 28 f2.8 lens on the camera. And that way, when we're, when we're really up there, it feels isolating, it feels empty. And it made for a good cut back and forth between the two clips when you see it in the final music video. Plus being that high in the air, with that wide of a lens it feels like we're much higher than we actually are the space feels grander almost and i decided to lock it off on a tripod just to kind of contrast all the movement that we've just been doing uh, for those close-ups so to achieve this look i literally couldn't have done it without the nanolite projector mount it helped me get the exact image i was looking for out of those two references so now if you want to steal my look now you know I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown, whether you're an artist, a director, a cinematographer, because at the end of the day, I just want you to get out there and explore your own creativity. So if you have enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and comment down what content you want to see from me in the future. Uh, I'm going to be doing plenty more of these breakdowns on more of my previous and upcoming videos as well, so stay tuned for that. And until then, I'll catch you next time.